Okay, we're over here at the lathe. Get ready to do a little clean up on the drum. I went ahead and cleaned up the shoes here. I ground them. They're way out of out of square. I got the uh, this pad here where the brake cam goes against. Got it squared up. It's way out of whack. These things are just pressed together, so they're not not very flat. So, and the, the brake line area was at a pretty big angle, so it was like this, real bad angle. So I ground this one until it got pretty clean. You can see how it's just barely touching right here on this edge. So I just ground it until I hit it. This other one I did the same thing. I got this squared up here. But this one here, you can see the low spots all through here, which all worn real bad. Or it was made that way, one way or the other. But anyway, I got tired of grinding. I ground quite a bit off to get it even that close. So I'm going to stop on that for now. So I'm getting ready to work on the brake drum a little bit. So... The shoes were dragging in here, I'm assuming, and this mark here, but I'm not sure about that because that mark doesn't look very deep. Uh, we got to clean this area up here. I cleaned a little bit of this off on the inside in here, but I get some more of that off. So let's, we're going to concentrate on the flange surface right now. Get that cleaned up. So I'm going to take my carbide scraper here and see if the uh, paint will come off easily. Appears to be coming off pretty easily. So, let me see a little bit. Yeah, I still can't see it. We'll go over in the other area. We'll be over anyway in a minute anyway. You have a drill press table. You have something flat around your work too, so that works good for that. There you go, you should be able to see it now. So, get that out of the way. So basically the carbide scraper knocks off the layer of paint that's right here. So it takes it off. Gives you something flat to hit again. that up pretty good. Now we're going to take it and have the sandpaper here. Hold that flat. Flip it over and just sand across the face here and see what we get. Turn a little bit each time to get you a nice even pattern. And it looks like it's coming in pretty flat. You can see the machine marks in there, but it's all right. But you don't see a real bright, shiny spot like where it's really hitting up high. Okay, so I'm good with that. That looks good. So let me come over here. Come back over here. So now I got the drum held in the, in the lathe up here. I'm going to go ahead a little sandpaper here and knock off the paint and stuff on the inside. So we'll just grab some, whatever this is, 180, 120, something. It's used anyway, so it doesn't really matter. enough to go on the hub. So now that's clean up here on this surface here now. So it's pretty clean. So now I can hold this in the lathe and I spin around and get this side. Spin these back down now. Rotate it back and forth a couple times, make sure it's flat. So now, the drum should be nice and square and flat now. Let's see. Not 
wobbling too much. It was wobbling quite a bit before all the uneven paint surface. Pretty straight now. It looked really, really bad before, and huh? it's pretty good. So, so it helps to have a flat mounting surface right back there to work to. So when you don't have that flat surface, it knocks the whole brake and slip back and forth like that. Wobbles around, has all kinds of problems. So now you can see how the inside of the drum is kind of rough. It's smooth, it's just a little, it's full of crap. Rough stuff. So we're going to get down the sandpaper. Try to clean up a little bit. And then we can see a little bit better there. So we're using the same piece of paper here we just used. Yeah, it looks a lot cleaner than it did. You can see there, but now it's not quite so much rust and crap on it. So right there is a rusty spot, so I'm going to try to get that with my hand right now. I can feel that area. <clears throat> I can feel that when I'm going by, around in a circle there. A heavier spot there. a lot better. I'm going to wipe this down. Give it a blow job and clean it off. Okay, let's go see what we got to work with here. bike. Dirty towel first, and we use a cleaner towel. I want to have all that grip inside of my clean towel. I use it for other stuff. It's one thing about the grid, it, it goes around from one spot to another and causes problems. So, very critical when you're trying to assemble stuff. Okay, that looks pretty clean now. So let's get this over a little closer. You know, let's go see what our brake shoes look like in here. They actually fit halfway decent, surprisingly. So 
this shoe fits pretty good. It's pretty even. This one over here, it's a little bit high in the center there. Mainly right here. Where all the good metals at? Or I got a good pad material. So I'm going to go and grind it right here a little bit on my disc sander. And we'll see if it fits the drum a little better. Arc these things in and try to get a little bit better fit. So a little bit never hurt, right? So I'm going to take this one back and go see the rinse the over. Yeah. Tripod hits on everything around here. You know, we get to do a walkabout. Oh, look at that. Crap everywhere. I'm going to go in this dark hole back here. Ooh, what's that? A light switch. Camera does circles too. Wonderful. All right, so there's our disc sander right down there. Disc grinder. And over here. Camera trying to come off the stand. Failing miserably. Okay. Now, right now I know this is a little off. So, I'm going to look at where I want it to be. And it's right in this area here, so I'm going to grind it. I'm going to grind it a little bit by hand. Right there now. Go ahead and put it down here. Put it down where I can see it. Yeah. So now it's not bouncing around like it was. Pretty clean. There we go. Back up the front again. What a shocker. Yeah, I'm gonna walk about. I'm too lazy to turn the camera on and off. Requires more editing. Ooh, flashing red lights out front. Maybe they're hauling the bums away again. That's why Scoopy wants to go over there. He's having fun out there. Okay, so now we got our shoes arced in. Like that. Okay, so we know they got to go on there like this. this thing over here a little bit further. It's hard to get it where you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so this is the springs that we took out. Obviously, this one here is not very good anymore. It's half eaten through. These aren't exactly very strong springs. So we have a couple options here. We have kickstand spring for a 85 to 06 soft tail. We have a kickstand spring for an 07 and up version. And then we have the rear brake pedal return spring for the four-speed shovelhead panhead bikes. I want to do panhead shovelhead. No, that doesn't even matter. Oh, that's a good thing. Now, they actually do use this spring on front brake shoe springs, too. So there's a number right there, if you can read it. It's a dash 69 number. Now, what we want to know is, is this going to fit with the shoes we got? So, what we got to do is lay it up in here like this. See, these, these have two different places to put a spring in here. First thing I do see if it'll even fit on the darn thing. Okay, it did fit in there. That's a plus. Then you're gonna put the other one on there, and that fit. And then we look at our tension. Okay, it doesn't have a lot of tension right now, but it does have tension on it. So 
you have, I have this much tension, so you gotta go this this far. So that's not a lot here. But when you open that up to fit over this right here, this thing here is about uh, it's probably half inch, nine sixteenths thick. Being a big heavy spring like this, you're gonna get a lot of tension really, really fast. So it should give us plenty of tension we need. Now I like having a lot of tension in the cam, so it keeps the thing. It helps return the brake lever and it keeps it on there good. And the light spring, we'll put that down on the bottom because all that does is just hold a pivot on. That's no big deal holding them together. And you wonder how much compression, how much extension you got on that. You can see how you got about a half inch of pull on that, most three eighths of an inch. So that'll work on that. Now you got two ways you can put the spring on. You can put it down on the bottom of the pin like this, or you can flip it around and put it on the bottom in this direction. See how the spring gets a lot closer to the base when you do it that way versus this way. See that way you got a finger over in here. When you flip it around, the spring moves down and you get right up next to it. So when you do that, it doesn't tend to drag on the brake drums when you do it that way. So you want to put them on the inside. Kind of like I got this chrome one in there already. And you also want to put it toward the inside, of the, the second position to the inside. You always want the spring closest to the backing plate, not to the drum, because it'll drag on the drum. Now right now, we're going to put that in there and see what it's going to do. So right now you can see how it's going to hit right here pretty heavy. Now if, the, if it hits, if it sits down that low, it's going to be hitting on that. So that means we're going to come in here and grind this, grind this away a little bit, or cut it away. So first thing I'm going to do is see how thick this thing is. This thing is pretty stinking thick. So I can go in here and cut this away a little bit and gain some clearances for the bigger spring. Because right now we're hitting against it and we're going to need some tension. But also right now the spring is not, it's all the way down, it's not all the way up. So if you flip it over, see now you got clearance in here for that spring. See you got clearance? So if it goes against the backing plate, it doesn't hit on the drum. If you have it against the brake drum side, it, drum, it hits on the drum. See that's why you help to put the springs all the way down. So one way we got to cut the drum, the other way we don't have to. So that makes a difference. This one obviously was on the wrong side. It was too close to the drum. That's why I was eating on the damn thing. Okay, so now we're going to have to figure out how we're going to get this assembled onto that backing plate. Because it's going to have a lot of tension on it right now. And i got to put the other spring in here. Okay, let's get this out of the way. So i got some room to work. Parts out of the way. Put the rag down so we protect the finish a little bit. Pivot went around some place. Pivot right over here. <clears throat> now does this pivot washer go on the inside or the outside? See the washer right here? So we have to figure out where that goes. So if you look over here on the fork, you can see it, right up in here, you have this surface here, and the backing plate is up in here, you want these to be square with each other, now we don't know if this one's square or not, so we need to find out. oil from either, so uh, probably from the inside of the fork, that's probably where it's coming from. <clears throat> so we'll wipe off the parts here that we're going to be touching, so full of oil. <clears throat> okay, so this here, we'll sit against what the hell is that? It's going to hit against these two surfaces, this one here and this one here. So this goes on the inside of this. Turn the wheel so you can see it a little better. It's 
hard to do with a tripod. Really hard to show you when I'm looking at it every time when I'm looking at stuff, but we're trying. Okay, so right now when you shove the backing plate all the way in, you can see how this here goes flush against that edge. And it's, it's, it's flush down in here too, which you can't really see, but you can see it up here. So that means that washer, wherever it ran off to, which disappeared or from my hands already, so here we go. This washer here obviously does not go in between here and here. Because if that went right like that, you'd have a big gap under here. When you tighten it all up, it'd, it'd bend the backing plate. So that means this has to go on the inside. So now you know this goes on the inside. Now you have a flat side of this washer and you got these little uh, serrations. Serration goes, goes against aluminum because this here has a clearance in it. See how this bolt's nice and loose in here? Whoop. That is so that the, when you have this assembled like this, the pivot is adjustable a little bit side to side like this to let the shoes self-center in the in the brake drum. And the serrations are what keeps it from moving around. Digs in the aluminum there. So that's how that goes together. The next thing you want to check is to make sure that <coughs> the shoes fit flat in here against this. <coughs> Excuse me. thing I want to do is take these rings back apart, but eh, you bastard. Yeah, we'll try it without it. Okay, so you put this onto the cam, so I can see what's going on too. Okay, you put this right here against that cam right there. Push it down, and there should be right against the cam on this side over here. So you see how the brake shoe is right where it belongs. I push it in, it's not going any further in. It's, it's right where it belongs. So the shoes fit on there correctly. Now obviously we got this jammed up mess right now. Stupid camera. You think it'll, I can't hold the camera and do what I'm doing. That's the problem. I'm trying to show you stuff. And it's just not working. So I'm going to give up on trying to show it to you. Hopefully you got it. If not, too bad. I think I get some work done at some point. Okay, so now this here's in our way. We have a hole on the bench right here. We're gonna take advantage of that hole. It's sitting on flat. There. Now it sits flat. Okay, now I can work on this. You gotta get it where you can do this stuff. Pull it back a little bit. Okay. This is the good one. That's the bad one. Get rid of the bad parts so you don't put them back in the bike. Very important. Okay, this is the good one. Okay, I got that one where I want it to be. Now I gotta get this one where I want it to be on this side. Let's swing it in from the bottom. Twist this around. Get in from the bottom. Okay, now they're all in where I want them to be. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to put one side on there where it belongs. <coughs> so we're on the pivot on this side, on the cam on that side. And we're going to try to roll this thing where it belongs. One side in, and for some stupid reason, both these sides are out. One's low, one's high. And that's because it wants to screw with me. So, all right, let it screw with me. The key part is the hard part over here is in there right now. <clears throat> so now I got to pry up on one side. That one's in. Now that was the easy part. Now I get this side to go on the bottom. That's a little bit harder. So I got to spread it and drop it. direction. 
course it's 100% not agreeing with me at all. side of the tent I can work on. That hurts my wrist. Yeah, that ain't helping any. My wrist doesn't like the pressure I'm putting on it. There we go. Okay, so now we got it on the pivot here, engaging its spot. We're sitting on the cam on this side, and we got some serious tension on that sucker. The okay, next thing you want to make sure you got the springs where they belong. And you can see how this spring here is halfway up on the uh, position where it's supposed to be. So I got to get it jammed back down. Luckily it wasn't engaged in the other side, so now it's down in the groove where it belongs. That one's on the low groove, that's on the low groove, low groove, low groove, and they're both on the inside, so the springs are closest to the outside edges. Now hopefully that doesn't hit on the brake drum. That's always a not a given though. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and put this in there. We do a mock-up. See if I see any drag marks. I'm not seeing any drag marks right now, so that's a plus. Okay, so now I gotta go find the wheel. Stick it up in there, do a mock-up with the wheel on the bike. And go get the wheel. Okay, one Tempkin wheel. together so much easier when they aren't wrong. Hmm. Famous last words. Axel doesn't want to go in. I see another problem. Axle went in that way. surface here is real hard. fits on real easy. Lots of clearances. So we know that's not a problem. OK, 
Okay. That's in. Okay, now I gotta put at least three lug nuts in there, bolts, whatever you want to call them, to pull the drum in equally and flat against the hub. And find out if everything's gonna work like it's supposed to. Stay in the drum. We're not drumming the hub. Not much of a seal hole in it. Get you from a different view here. Yeah. Gonna get an idea what the hell is going on here. Yeah, that's a good one to get for looking. I haven't been in Google Glasses yet, though, for everybody yet. Then you can see what I'm looking at, probably. Okay, there's one in. They're tight. Put the axle back in. Go ahead and put the nuts on this side. Camera's on the wrong side again. So. Back around over here. People get get all my YouTube guys seasick from looking, watching me go back and forth. Okay. This stuff's all in the way. You got too much crap, and you got to move it. There's the spring you actually did use. Okay, now I need to find my nuts. It used to be right in front of me. That one. Where's the other one at? Right here. Okay. So we got a washer, lock, <coughs> regular nut. I can't put the brake on right now because I don't have it, I don't have it hooked up. So we're doing 100% mock-up. I need to put all the parts in there and tighten them up. Hear that brake spring rubbing rubbing? We don't like that. That's not good. So we have to figure out what's dragging, how to stop it. So that means we get to take all that apart, see if we can see any marks. If we don't see any marks, then we get to do something so we get some marks. And 
find out what's hitting. Once you find out what's hitting, then you can fix it. So you find out what's hitting, you can't fix it. Tools on the floor. Too close to your work area, you have problems. See? Okay, now are we gonna be able to pull this wheel off with the drum on it? Probably not. Nope. We had that problem already. <clears throat> Let me get to undo the little nuts again. A lot of putting bikes together is just repetitive work. Over and over and over until it works. Unless you don't care, you just run it. Then it rubs that spring in half like it was doing. But by then it'll be down the road a few thousand miles and nobody will care when the front brake fails. Not likely will lock up. It's a hardly break. Okay, so now this is off. And I have no idea where it's hitting at because I can't see anything it's hitting. So we gotta do something so we can see what's gonna why it's hitting and where it's hitting. So I'm gonna look on the inside of the drum or in the brake shoes over here. See if there's any kind of mark on anything at all. And I don't see any kind of marks anywhere. So we're going to have to do something to highlight the mark area. So you can see in there that the shoes are not, or the springs up under here, there's no marks on, there, on here that I can see anywhere. They have different amounts of noise when they rub, see. So you can listen for it. Maybe you'll hear, maybe you can tell a tune change. Some people can, I'm sure. I'm going to do it the old fashioned way. It's called black paint. That's my engine paint I use for cylinders. I might be able to see that. And I'm also going to paint the drum, too. I have no idea what you're looking at, so I'm going to move my camera around. Okay, so now it's painted. I'm going to wipe off the, the odor spray on the brake surface. That might actually matter. I've got to remember it is a Harley brake. It doesn't really work that good, so... A little paint on that surface might actually help it. You never know. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, now we're going to put this up on there. part right now is the if I move it it's going to scrape it like it's hitting not where it's actually hitting though so I can put this all together and try not to rotate anything get the axle in there pretty quickly it disappeared under the rag over here I'm going to work around the axle now Hmm. 
doesn't want to go in the hole now. Yeah, not that time. lugs in here. This time I'm going to have to look around the what's there. Cellar wrench was another half inch longer to be make a big difference. An inch longer would be great. The difference between making a tool and using a tool. When you use a tool, you know how it's screwed up, you need to fix it. in it. Got to rub it enough you can actually see a mark. Do a high speed rub, how's that? A little drag bearing, see? How fast you can go with that. So what's nice about drum brakes over disc brakes. They don't drag as much. You can go faster with drum brakes and disc brakes. Just can't stop as quick. There's always pros and cons to everything. Okay, now I can do the fun part. Take plugs all back out of here. Try not to drag it any more than you need to. Back in. Pull 
pull the wheel out. Ah. There we go. Pull our drum off. And look for any kind of a drag mark. Of course, I'm not seeing any. Seen a damn thing. <clears throat> Look on the springs. Oh, there's a mark right there. One little mark right there. Don't see any mark on that spring at all. That mark there could very easily just be for me uh, taking a drum on and off. And that would be roughly be somewhere on the inside of this thing. So you think the, there'd be enough Enough drag there, you'd hear, you know, you have something to see, but I'm not seeing anything. Hmm. Yep. So whatever it's hitting on, it ain't much. Where's the springs at? Trying to determine where the springs might hit. I can't see anything in there. finger in there to tell anything. Hmm. Yep. Can't tell a damn thing. I don't want to just go cutting on the drums for the hell of it. Hope like hell I get it. I don't like doing stuff like that. So, let's see if we can move the springs to the outer edge. I don't know if I can even do that.
the fuck is this damn thing doing? Shooter up ain't doing a damn thing. Shooter up's too small. Gonna make bigger studio arcs here. Now well, the big one's the small one. The big one's bigger. But now the other one can't get in there. It's too big. Spring has now moved over one position on just the one side. <clears throat> if that's going to make any difference, we'll see a mark now. First time, make it work second time. We're gonna get a mark, some side. Even if I have to force the mark. It's getting a little harder now. Definitely hear the spring now. It sounds like the big one's hitting. Probably the one I moved out. see it. It wasn't dragging as so much as I thought it would be dragging. We're going to be dragging a lot more than that. spring. Ah, we left a mark on the drum finally. Let's see the dull mark right on top of the lip right here. 
right where my fingernail is, is where the mark is, all the way around. So we don't have to worry about cutting against the face here or on the taper over here. We just need to worry about knocking off the top of the titty there and just down to slight down the outside edge a little bit. So now we know where we got to cut. Okay, now I got to try to get the spring back over where it belongs. Somebody moved it out of the way for some reason. Okay, that went back quickly. Okay, so now we're going to go over the lathe and do a little cutting. So let's go over there right now. Yep, right over here in a dark hole over here. Oh, why it's dark? Oh, she made the light off. Electricity costs money. We don't give a crap about the green trees. this go in there and cut the hell out of it and cut it all right I don't know if you can even begin to see what I'm looking at probably all you to see the back of my head and yeah, most likely let's see maybe we'll get fancy get overhead shot how's that Fancy tripod shot now. There you go. Now you should be able to see what I'm going to do here. Let's go up the camera stand. Yeah, it keeps saying the battery's going bad. Too bad. Okay, you got kind of a view what I'm going to do now. First thing I do is slow it down quite a bit. Maybe more than this. Yeah, that's pretty good. First thing I do is knock the top of the tin off. Yeah, that one right there. I'm going to do a little bit of a cut. Not that one. Yeah, about a 20, 30 thou. Whatever that one. And then we come to the inside. Go until we touch. hand feed it and crank it with this hand out here. And we'll make a taper. There we go. Come back and do that again. A little bit deeper this time. So now you got a nice little radius going along in there, but I moved it in quite a bit, so shouldn't be hitting too much now. So hopefully now it'll fit. I'll go back over here. Yeah. How's that? Fun? Turn the light off. Don't waste electricity, you know. Okay, we come back over here. 
You know, so the camera stands a lot lower now. All right, so you can see with the spring, I'm sitting on the spring right here. And I never did touch that one because I didn't move it out. So only this one was hitting. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little shot of paint on that. Right there, just for the hell of it. <clears throat> Stands in my way. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little paint right here on the, this, just for the, the can. I'm going to get some paint right there and how that happened. Damn sloppy ass painter. I don't know how that happened. It's alright. I'll just put a little bit of solvent on there. Look at that. Cuts that all the fending uh, paint right off that drum surface. Yeah, that's the way you do it. There you go. Nothing to it. We gotta get the bottom off the surface now. Took a towel switch. Don't want to contaminate the brake line. Alright. Camera's way too low. There you go. Just where you can see better. Okay. So now we're going to put this back up on the bike over here, that piece right over there. I'm going to do that again. And we'll see if it's going to drag. Hopefully, this time, it won't make any noise. But you never know, it might actually make more noise. I've had that happen before. Huh? You actually have to engage the threads before they work. Don't forget to do that. Nope, dumbass. I already did that one. Can't put two in one hole, it didn't work. It's hard to get good help, you know. The thing it got worse. And we know we cut a lot of it off more than we needed to, so that's what doesn't make sense. Why is it hitting now? Uh... <sighs> 
fun, fun, fun. Yeah. So gotta think of something else to do. So I think now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put some tape on the springs. Let's see if that might be it. Now the shoes aren't being pulled up, so maybe if I had the cable on there, it would pull up and I could tell what's going on that way. That might work. It's not, we're not exactly sure what the dragon is, so it's hard to tell. And I think I'll try the tape method. So we'll come back when I figure it out further. Otherwise, I'd be wasting another hour of video. So we'll see what happens. I'll let you know.